Why is it that I have a small bruise on my spinal cord and I should not live my life confined to a wheelchair? Everyone gets bruises. It didn't make sense to me intuitively that paralysis should be forever. One day we will be successful in turning stem cells into cures. We'll be able to be successful in getting out of this wheelchair. September 10th, 1994 was my day to live in infamy. I was playing linebacker in football. I went in to make one more tackle and I suffered a C5, C6 implosion of the vertebrae. I went up to grab my friend's hand and I couldn't flex my hand. I went from being able to bench press 430 pounds to zero in a single second. When a spinal cord gets injured, effectively it's a bruise. Most spinal cord injuries actually are relatively small. At the end of the day, maybe the size of a grape. An injury, even of the size of the grape, has huge consequences in terms of communication between the brain and the spinal cord. The brain can't communicate with muscles. The spinal cord below the injury can't send impulses up to the brain. The hardest thing is actually not being able to squeeze your wife's hand. It hurts not to be able to pick up your son and to comb your daughter's hair. It's, it, it's beyond painful. My father and I, Don Reed, we realized there's a lot of great science going on, but there's science we're scattered. There are people working here, and actually people are kind of reinventing the wheel and even doing some of the same science. And so we actually created the Roman Reed Law, and the Roman Reed Law did have a very great unifying effect for spinal cord injury. Maybe my football career died, but a patient advocacy career was born, and that's to me, is way more important. To find a cure for someone living with paralysis or to go score a touchdown, I'd rather find a cure any single day of the week. So people living with spinal cord injury should take heart because there's great leaders working right now. We work at everything from a very molecular level all the way up to working with people with spinal cord injuries. In most injuries, there is some sparing, and that's important. Some of the connections are still there and don't work for whatever reason. And actually, one of the reasons seems to be that they lose their insulation. So the myelin is the insulation, and that turns out to be one of the targets for stem cell therapy that actually is the first one that's coming on, online, at least in terms of clinical trials. Ah, oh, the Geron trial, this is so big. This is huge, groundbreaking. We can actually, for the first time, have FDA clearance to be able to take an embryonic stem cell and turn that into a cure. This actually has just been approved now for uh, uh, of the initial clinical trial, and everyone, of course, is hugely excited about this. And the idea of the Geron therapy that was actually pioneered by Hans Kirstead's work here is to transplant cells that have been differentiated into what are called oligodendrocyte precursor cells. When implanted into the spinal cord, these cells reform the myelin sheath and restore communication. Even a relatively small improvement in function can make a huge difference in quality of life.